Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two. Then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to a very familiar and alarming venue. Yes, we are going back to Alaska, but this time we'll be visiting the Elmendorf-Richardson Joint Air Force Base on the north side of Anchorage. The base is bordered on the west and north by the Knick Arm, and on the south by the city of Anchorage. In the east, though, a stretch of sparsely populated forest stretches from the Chugach Mountains, interrupted only by highways and other roads. The elevation here is below 200 feet above sea level, and thick pockets of spruce, fir, and birch trees tower over blankets of alder and willow bush. There are swamps and creeks here, which run with salmon and other fish each summer, making this area a prime spot for many animals. Moose are a common sight near the base, as well as brown bears and black bears. On the base, families of soldiers live in nearby housing complexes, and one of them is called the Moose Crossing Housing Complex. Moose Crossing is a modern housing development with curving streets lined with moderately sized homes. Scattered throughout the subdivision are a handful of playgrounds, centrally located for neighborhood kids to access. The slides and swings are padded with sand so kids don't hurt themselves. Though many of the backyards in the neighborhood are fenced, the playgrounds are placed in the middle of open community yards. Kids and their parents can walk straight across the grass or run and play on it. It is perfect for picnics or games of tag. But what the open grassy layout of the community yard is not good for is keeping the bears of the area away from children. On June 4, 2010, four young girls were having a ball as their ponytails bounced with each jubilant step they took. For the sake of this episode, we'll call them Julie, age 5, Jenny, age 6, Shelley, age 8, and Sandy, age 9. The girls were friends and played together frequently on the playground, just off Campos Avenue, on the north side of the complex. This playground was surrounded by trees and bushes, which gave it a relaxing feeling. This summer day was typical, with temperatures ranging into the mid-50s by the afternoon, with a 6 mile per hour breeze and clear skies. It was just another day in paradise, but sometimes it rains, even in paradise. As the girls played and frolicked, a few of the parents looked on and chatted, unaware of a very interested and dangerous visitor approaching them. From the obscurity of the nearby bushes, the girls' giggles had reached the ears of the black bear. It emerged from the brush about 30 feet from the girls and was focused on their movements and laughter. Now, black bears are not a rare sight in Anchorage or anywhere in Alaska. While I was visiting about 13 years ago, one ran right past my friend and I as we shot our bows in his yard. The presence of a black bear likely did get the parents' attention, but didn't alarm them to action. What did get their attention was that the bear didn't disappear into the brush upon seeing the people at the playground. It crouched down just a bit and slowly started walking directly toward the playing children. Upon seeing the approaching bear, Sandy began to yell to alert everyone of its presence. Once everyone started looking at the bear, they began to yell and scream at it too, but it continued its methodical stalk toward the children. Herman Greasy is the wildlife biologist for the third wing on base. Part of his job was to educate the base residents on how to handle interactions with wildlife and stay safe doing so. He spent time in the schools and made sure to explain to the kids that playing dead was what to do if they surprised a bear. But how do you teach a child what to do when they encounter a bear demonstrating predatory behavior? His instructions were essentially the same as the ones adults received and included making noise and trying to make yourself appear as large as possible. Remembering these lessons, Sandy puffed herself up and lifted her arms above her head, but the bear continued to slowly step toward the little girls. It seemed mesmerized by their vulnerability. Realizing that her efforts were not frightening the bear, Sandy dashed off toward her home to get her parents, hoping that they would be able to scare it off. Jenny, Julie, and Shelley were much too close to the bear to run away, and somehow the little girls knew that. Their lessons on bear-aware behavior told them that running may cause the bear to chase them, just like kids do when another kid runs from them. The little girls told each other to play dead, just like they were told in their classrooms. One by one, the little girls flopped over and buried their faces toward the ground. By this point, the bear was within just a few feet of the girls. When they flopped over, the bear seemed curious and maybe even confused. These girls hadn't run away like some sort of prey animal, and they weren't fighting like something the bear would have to protect itself against. 
Befuddled by the little girl's mysterious and instant deaths, the bear began to sniff them as they laid on the ground. It approached Julie and investigate her as she froze, hoping it would leave her alone. The bear stretched out one of its paws and placed it on her back. Julie could feel the pressure of the bear's paw on her back and focused on remaining calm and quiet. She held her hands alongside her head and neck to make sure the bear didn't bite her anywhere that would cause a severe injury. Julie could only wait as she could hear the bear sniffing her and breathing. As the bear stood on and over Julie, Shelley and Jenny peered through their fingers, hoping it would not hurt their friend. As they watched, they could see the bear drop its head toward Julie's leg and open its mouth. It slowly closed its jaws on Julie's leg, and she let out a squeal at first. Then her fear grew into terror, and she screamed as the bear's teeth punctured her skin. The unexpected reaction from Julie sent the bear scurrying off a few yards, where it paused and stared at her. It didn't expect the girl to scream, and was alarmed by the sudden noise. Just then Sandy's mom came running onto the playground. She yelled at the bear, and it showed no reaction to her presence, or her shouts. The girls were instructed to walk to a neighbor's house, and with trepidation slowly obeyed Sandy's mom. As soon as the girls had entered the neighbor's house, Sandy's mom began walking slowly away from the playground toward Campos Avenue. The bear, having found a new fascination, followed her onto the street. Sandy's mom pulled out her cell phone and snapped a few pictures of the bear, just in case there was any way authorities could recognize it from its markings or other distinguishing characteristics. Once Sandy's mom led the kids away and got to safety herself, the bear meandered around the playground for a few minutes. After the people were gone, it seemed to be unsure of what to do next. Neighbors watched it from the relative safety of their houses until it disappeared back into the forest around the housing development. Julie was taken to the base hospital and her wounds were cleaned and sutured. She was left with scratches from the bear's claws where it stood on her back and four puncture wounds in her leg from its teeth. The tissue around the bite wound was bruised and sore for a few days, but Julie made a full recovery soon after the attack. The mental anguish from the little girl's experience may scar her for life, but we are hoping it doesn't. As a result of this attack, the base refined its approach to bears. Its educational program that had taught children bear awareness was successful. The predatory behavior of this bear may have been amplified if the little girls had run away. It may have caused an attack by the bear, and the results of that may have been catastrophic. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I'm left with a few questions for you. What do you think may have happened had the girls run away upon seeing the bear? Do you think the base should have a bear response team? Why didn't the parents have a can of bear spray for such occasions? What would you do if your child was on a playground and a black bear began to sneak up on her? I will gladly read and reply to your thoughts, so please post them in the comment section below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country.